Hey guys, it's Chris from Steedun. Today we have the Edelbrock Supercharged Silver Bullet. We're gonna go ahead and do a quick product review on the Stage 2 kit as received from Edelbrock. It's a carb approved kit, pretty excited about it. And then ultimately getting that blower ready for installation on top of a Gen 3 Coyote for the Silver Bullet. So without further ado, let's get wrenching. Here we have the Edelbrock Stage 2 Supercharger Kit for 2018 Plus Mustangs. This is obviously a lot to talk about here, so we'll go ahead and dive in. First off, this has the 2650 rotor pack in it. It's gonna be a really efficient package to really get the absolute most power into your car. Another highlight would be the dual pass three core air to water intercooler that's gonna help keep this behemoth under the hood nice and cool as you're beating on it all day long. In addition to this, what sets this particular kit apart from the Stage 1 kit would be the intake that comes with it, the intake tract, as well as the 103 millimeter throttle body. This thing's built aluminum, it's built to last, and this throttle body is really going to allow you to maximize the full potential of this Edelbrock Stage 2 Supercharger Kit. Now, the Stage 1, not to down talk it, but it does have the stock throttle body, the stock air box, you're essentially stuck in, sucking through a straw, if you know what I mean. So to get the absolute most out of this kit, definitely look to the stage two. And the best part is it's a three year, 36,000 mile warranty from Edelbrock. Now, if you were to go with the Edelbrock stage one kit for your 2018 plus Mustang GT, you can expect 623 horsepower and 510 foot pounds of torque if you go ahead and use their Edelbrock calibration. Now I will add, if you go with that Edelbrock calibration, whether you're stage one or stage two, you're gonna be able to have their three year, 36,000 mile powertrain, limited powertrain warranty, as well as that 50 year carb approval, which is kind of a big deal if you're adding an Edelbrock supercharger with all this power to your Mustang. And again, with that calibration, you're able to add this thing all 50 stage, which is kind of a big deal. But again, we're talking about the Stage 2 kit, getting the absolute most with this 103 millimeter throttle body, that full intake tract. It's gonna be a big deal because we can expect 686 horsepower from the Stage 2 kit with the Edelbrock calibration. I will add that we're adding this particular kit to the Silver Bullet. So we are gonna be omitting some parts of the kit, using some beefier parts. Again, it's not gonna be an out of the box build, but again, we're looking for a max effort build, something that we can start with, with the stage two, and work our way up for max power and maximum efforts. So we're gonna go ahead and dive in. This isn't really a normal installation for us because the Silver Bullet's already highly modified. Uh, so again, we're gonna be omitting certain parts of the install, but we're gonna go ahead and put this, everything on the supercharger together on the table. And then once everything's together, we'll be able to drop it on top of the Coyote engine and go from there. So let's get to it. So we're gonna get ready to put the supercharger together on the table. There are gonna be a couple different things about this, actually quite a bit of different things about this installation that are gonna be different from a stock 2018 plus GT. I have Jamie here to lend me a hand. Let's be honest, he's gonna be doing a lot of the work and I'm gonna be doing a lot of learning. Uh, but follow along, we're gonna kind of skip ahead. Uh, the reason for this being that the engine for the car is currently already sitting on a table, ready for this to be installed. So ultimately the teardown process, um, there's plenty of other videos on YouTube and the installation manual to get an idea for what is involved in that. But Jamie, where do we start? Uh, start with the install manual. Very handy book. We're going to start on page 21. Uh, step 67, which is for this, installing the intake O-rings or gaskets onto the blower itself. And these already were removed from the factory they intake They were removed manifold. from the factory intake manifold. Or yeah, from yeah, they were from the factory intake manifold. And we're going to start by rolling this heavy thing up so that you can see the weight on its back. We gotta be careful of the sensor on the back side there. Well then you need to grab that side. I got it. Why don't you go around and grab the gaskets? Because then we'll see what you throw on there. Sitting on that, and 
you'll notice that it has two different style slots, gasket slots, gasket grooves, and we're using intake gaskets from a 2019 intake manifold. Probably a good idea to clean these before you install them. When too. you're reusing originals, yeah, it's a good idea to wipe them down before you start just to make sure that there's nothing. What would you use to clean them? Uh, I just use a chop rag just to wipe them off. Most of the time they'll just clean, clean off with a paper towel or shop rag. Right? There's nothing special needs to be done to them other than just make sure that they're clean and dry. And that's it for the installation of the gaskets. Uh, pick up from the back, from the bottom. Now the next thing that we're going to do is the fuel rail. The kit comes with a set of Ford Performance LU47 injectors, uh, 47 pound injectors. On a typical stage two, this is sufficient for the power level you're gonna get. We are not going to use those because we're going to be running the 85 fluid at a higher boost level than the kit was, than a, than a regular stage two kit was set up to run. More or less planning ahead. Yeah, because we don't want to go through this three times pulling, pulling stuff apart. The fuel rails uh, for the kit come with fuel injector retaining clips and little bolts to hold the uh, injectors in the correct position. They need to be clocked by the connector for the correct spray pack. And these are the fact these are some factory injectors, the only 47s are identical in how they're built and the retaining clips how they go in. We're not going to be using these. We're going to be using um, our injector dynamics ID 1050 X's because we're planning on them with a lot of the 85 units. So the installation of the injectors is the same no matter what injector you use and they should simply just push into place and fall down. This guy here? No. I'm hiding on my tool down here. Ten millimeter heads on the injector rail bolts. We'll make sure that they are snug down to the tight. Are we going to put together the other rail as well? Yeah, that can that clip can come out. All right. While he is putting that together, the kit also comes with all of the necessary fuel line components to hook up to your factory fuel rail, uh, both for the high pressure pump, the direct inject pump, and the standard fuel line coming in. Crossover tube goes from side to side on the fuel rail across the rear. Uh, it comes with the adapter for your injector rail pressure sensor and some different plugs to block off the holes you do not use. In this case, we will not be using the standard fuel line fittings that come with the kit because we already have a fuel system installed on this car. So we're going to be kind of changing up from that a little bit to install our normal air equipped lines. Crossover two is larger diameter 
flow more fuel for the E85 and the plan on running through it. And a different selection of fittings because we already have an arc run for that fuel system. Also, we have a pressing to be able to put our pressure gauge back on the fuel pressure rate. You might help me a bit with the fuel rail here. Okay. The fuel, the two outside fittings face toward, well, they face out. And the injectors just push into the fuel rail. I've already put some grease to lubricate the O ring so they don't tear when we're putting all this together. So, do you know off the top of your head what the difference in flow rate is from the included injectors to the ones we're using? Um, I don't remember what the flow rate in CC is on the LU47s. Those are uh, 1,050 CC. Is that what you recommend for somebody who's looking to run E85 with this particular kit, or is it a little overkill? Depends on power levels. Uh, it, it depends on the power level and what fuel you're planning on running. Like I said, in this case, we're going to be running a E85, so the fuel requirement, fuel volume requirement, is a little bit higher than what you would stand use standard. One of the differences is with this kit, with what we're doing versus the standard stage two kit, is again the fuel volume, and we're going to be putting a larger diameter crossover line. Teflon line fuel, fuel line with 180 degree swivel fittings. So it gives us the flexibility we need to be able to run the fuel line around the back of the intake or around the back of the blower and still be able to clear any other, other accessories we're going to have to use. The kit comes with the bushing to be able to reinstall your factory fuel rail pressure sensor and it will go into the rear hole, I'm pretty sure. We're not going to install it completely tight for the moment because some of this stuff will come back off before we install it in the car. But we're also installing a fuel pressure gauge so we can set our fuel pressure accordingly. And because we're not using the factory uh, fuel lines, we'll be using one of the Looks fittings. To be the rear. Hmm? The rear. Yeah, me. it is in the rear. That's not sure. Or at least that's what the book says. It goes in the, the, the pressure sensor goes in the rear. But since we're deviating from the factory fuel system, that's a returnless system to our return style system, uh, we won't be using the factory push together fitting, push lock fittings. We'll be using all air equipped fittings, AN fittings to make all of our fuel lines and fuel connections. Also in the book, you'll notice that it has the 
new hoses for the EVAP system, the PCV system. We're not going to be using any of that on this car. So we are going to skip over those, but if you're doing this as a standard stage two install, you'll need to use those as the uh, manual lays out to do it. Um, really, there's not a whole lot of assembly to these. Once you get the fuel rails installed, they come pretty well assembled. Uh, the next biggest thing on putting the blower together is going to be getting the throttle body on. Now, we won't be using any of these, well, we'll be using one of these fittings for the brake booster, but the other two, one for the uh, canister purge solenoid and for the uh, crankcase ventilation, we will not be using. First thing we need to do is remove the tape to seal the front of the air inlet on the lower housing. Now one thing to note, the stage one kit does reuse the factory throttle body. So it has a, an adapter that comes off the blower and necks down pretty far in order to get to that stock throttle body size. Uh, thankfully on the stage two kit, you get the big boy, 103 millimeter. Um, so pretty exciting to be able to utilize all the millimeters possible. It does use an adapter, but it uses a much larger adapter. The adapter is beveled and needs to be installed in the correct orientation, which is going to be facing the throttle body slightly down. And you grab the gasket as well, too. Uh, yeah, I grabbed the gasket. And it just simply bolts to the front with the provided Allen head bolts. And somehow or another, I actually managed to grab the right Allen edge for that. Five mil. Make sure to get at least one bolt started so you can keep the gasket lined up. Okay. A couple of the other things with this kit, it includes a set of Ford Performance spark plugs that are a colder heat range than standard. For the Stage 2 kit, as installed onto a stock car with uh, all stock hardware and stock catalytic converters, 
you'd get these to 35 thousandths per the installation manual. We will not be using those spark plugs as we already use uh, a different brand and a different heat range already and we will be gapping those to what our tuner tells us to gap them to. Um, as for the rest of the blower install, uh, a couple of things that Edelbrock notes is when you're doing this install, do not actuate this uh, actuator, don't pull the rod, don't try to make it work. It works by vacuum and pressure, on air pressure only. Don't try to sit here and manually pull this or adjust the set screw. You'll only screw it up and have the potential to blow your motor up. Uh, <laughs> and that's not a good thing. Uh, it can cause it to either uh, open too quickly which will cause you to lose power or it'll cause it not to open at all which can cause it to overboost and bad things usually happen as a result because their tune is not set up to deal with overboost conditions caused by a stuck actuator. Uh, they send the kit with a, uh, an SCT BDX tuner and the tuning procedure is outlined very well in the book. Also the uh, BDX uh, tuner has good instructions as you go through. We'll tell you step by step how to actually put the tune in the car. So we don't even need to crack open the yeah, this case, is, do we? No, there's no, we're not going to be taking the top cover off for any reason. Um, the unit comes already sealed and it will remain sealed until it is, for whatever reason, down the road needs to be serviced. Which we will probably do with it at some point. But Sweet. Um, is there anything else we need to cover with the basic assembly? That's all belt right? I don't think so. In our next installment, video installment, we will be installing this on the car and installing the pulleys. So that will be our next big step on this. And one thing to note, we will be putting this supercharger on the engine, which is sitting on a table and then which gives you the, the best view um, all around the supercharger and all around the motor so you can see exactly what we're doing um, and then ultimately uh, dropping the body of the car. Yeah we're going to drop the car back over the top of the engine mm -hmm. once we have everything assembled. Uh, we're still waiting on a couple of other parts for the, for the car so it's still going to be a few days before we have it ready to actually put in the car but uh, Hopefully in the next day or so, we will be putting this on and showing everybody how this actually installs and any other modifications that need to be done to the car as you're going. That about wraps up installing all the parts we need of the supercharger on the table. We're going to go ahead and take this thing and drop it on the engine, show you how to go from there. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and comment below and let us know what you think about the Edelbrock Supercharger on the Silver Bullet and ultimately about the installation and the package received from Edelbrock. I mean, it's an all-in-one package that really just gets the job done, whether it's street or strip. And ultimately, we will be doing a next installment of this series of getting that blower on top of the Gen 3 Coyote. So stay tuned, hit that like, subscribe button, that notification bell so you get a notification on your phone next time a Cita video drops. And don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.